The VCR is a great piece of technology with a terrible user interface, so that most people who own one don't take advantage of its full functionality. That's why someone invented the VCR Plus, a front end that makes it easier to use. Well, the same could be said about database software. Very powerful, but generally difficult to use, except the same change is taking place there with the development of a much friendlier user environment. Today, we'll take a look at, believe it or not, easy to use database programs on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by PC Connection and Mac Connection, mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh, and the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me this week is Alan Simpson, writer, analyst, and database expert and uh, author of not only these books over here on DBase alone, but dozens of books on database programs, other software programs. Alan, we're talking about easy to use databases, which some people think is an oxymoron. And one of the examples is DBase, frankly. People have thought it very difficult to use. This is the newest version, DBase 4 at the moment. And just run us through this interface. Well, it's more like a modern interface in the sense that you can move things around with arrow keys, choose things from menus. Uh, more in keeping with modern programs. But let's go back now just two generations and show me the user interface for DBase 2. Well, there's not much to see. <laughs> Help, what do I do next, right, right? This is about it. Okay, now what have software developers and designers done now to in fact make database programs easier to use? Well, historically, database programs were tools for programmers, yeah. professional programmers, and it was assumed you were a programmer when you opened the box. Mm -hmm. The tendency is away from that so that non-programmers people with minimal computer experience can interact with a database through a graphical, mm -hmm. menu-driven system. All right, well, today we'll look at several easy-to-use but powerful databases, including FileMaker Pro, Panorama 2, Paradox, and FoxPro. Now, an automobile plant is one place which needs a powerful database to keep track of hundreds of different parts for dozens of different models, but where the database also has to be accessible to workers with limited computer training. The answer in this auto plant was a Mac product called Fourth Dimension. This used to be a General Motors auto plant in Fremont, California. GM closed it down, but then created a partnership with Toyota to reopen it as a joint venture under the name NUMI. The plant now produces the Geo Prism, the Toyota Corolla, and the Toyota truck. The key to reopening this plant was better quality control and the managers and workers are now finding it easier to maintain quality thanks to the use of computers and a database program called Fourth Dimension. Don Von Rotz of DVR Consulting suggested Fourth Dimension for several reasons. One, we were able to store and manipulate graphic images easily. Uh, two, it had the ability to relate files, uh, relational abilities to relate files and work with subsets of information very easily. It was multi-user, and it also uh, allowed for a good report writer interface where a uh, novice could make reports dynamically. Inspectors here have less than a minute to check out a car, so quick response time is essential. With fourth dimension, Numi's workers are able to get information about defects quickly so they can fix a quality control problem before it gets too serious or too costly. The quality of the car is higher now uh, because of the ability of the, uh, of the inspector and the management to query the database. So uh, whereas before the information that would be uh, captured during a shift wouldn't be available until after the shift, now they're able to get it uh, real time anytime they want. So as cars uh, go by and defects are collected, uh, they can then query and find out what the problems they're having up further in the line and correct those problems immediately. There are now 23 computer workstations in this auto plant. Using the fourth dimension database, NUMI workers have been able to improve the average defect to car ratio here by 150 percent. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel.
Besides ease of use, you also win speed and power in a database. Here to show us two more Mac database programs which offer all of the above are Jim Ray of ProView and Dennis Marshall of Claris. Dennis, let's just lay the groundwork for people who may not understand the difference. There are two kinds of database programs we're talking about, right? Flat file and relational, and what's the difference? Well, really, the flat file database is designed to store and manage information in one single file. The relational database architecture is really an approach that divides the data in several different files, and the files can be connected together to manage a larger group of information. And what we're going to look at now are flat file databases, which are a little easier to deal with. And Jim, let's turn to yours, which is called Panorama 2, I take it. That's right. Uh, now, just show us what approach do you take to Panorama? What kind of user would it be intended for? Uh, small businesses, people at departments uh, of a larger company, things like that. Mm -hmm. All right, Jim, show us how Panorama works. How would you use it? Okay. Well, I've set up this uh, checkbook database here, which is a, sort of an example of one thing that you could do with okay. uh, It doesn't really look like a database with all those fancy <laughs> graphics up there. Well, you can. it has drawing tools, so you can create any so kind of forms. So it's created in Panorama. Exactly. Okay. You could create invoices or mailing labels, all kinds of different things. So the first thing I wanted to show you was how Panorama can help you enter your data accurately mm -hmm. and quickly. It's real important that your data get entered accurately or it's not much worth. Uh, so let me add a new record. And I'm going to set up a check for Blue Cross that I wrote last Friday. Mm -hmm. So I'll start by entering last Friday. Now one of the things that Panorama does is it understands dates the way people do, uh, rather than forcing you to enter them numerically. So I'll go ahead and enter that. And you see it knows it yeah. last Friday. Um, <coughs> now. Um, I want to enter Blue Cross, mm -hmm. so I'll just start and type uh, Blue. And as soon as I get into a few letters, Panorama goes ahead and completes the entry for me because I've already entered Blue Cross once before. Mm -hmm. So it knows what I'm thinks it knows what I'm about to type, and it goes ahead and guesses. And that really helps me enter it consistently every time. It reduces so it the chance of typos and so exactly, on. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Now we'll move on to the to the number here, and I can set it up to enter the number without a decimal point if I want, which accountants like. And I can also set up categories in advance. So for example, here I can just pick insurance from the list. And again, it minimizes the chance of any kind of a typo. Right. It wrote out the amount in text also on its own. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. It knows how to do that. OK. Now once you've got uh, data entered, you can also view it as a list uh, like this, kind of mm -hmm. more like a spreadsheet format with rows and columns. And uh, you can take this data and analyze it a lot of different ways. Now I've set up a macro in advance that'll go ahead and categorize it by month and then by expense categories within the month. And it goes ahead and totals it. And now we see all the uh, so summaries. your months on the left and your total, total for expenditure each month for on the, the right. month. Yeah. Right. Now, what's really neat about this is I can actually go in and expand any one of the months and see more detail. Uh, for example, I'll expand February here, and now I can see exactly how that broke down now by the category. categories for that month. Exactly. And can you go even deeper? Sure. I can just click on any of the categories and say expand, and now I see and they're the actual checks. The actual checks. Yeah. So you can get any level of detail that you want, you know, from the yeah. overall summaries. How else could you look at the data here? Well, let me uh, show you another way you can do that. Oops. Is uh, with a cross tab, which is like a two dimensional table. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, a budget, which I've prepared here in advance. And, and we see it's got the months across the top and uh, categories down the side. Now, a lot of people do this with yeah, a spreadsheet. It looks like a spreadsheet, yeah. Exactly. But the neat thing about Panorama is it automatically fills in all this mm -hmm. data for you. You don't have to fill it in, it does all the filling in, categorizing, and it also adds it up. Um, the other neat thing is that I can click on any number here that I want. And I can just say, uh, please show me what the original data is. So I click on September purchases, and there and it shows me. that's where that total came exactly. from. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I can click on any number. Sure. I can click on telephone. And now we see yeah. there's all the telephone. All right, expenses. Panorama 2. That's very nice, Jim. Let me ask you to slide the keyboard and the mouse over to Dennis. And Dennis, FileMaker Pro is positioned how vis-a-vis -vis something like Panorama, which we just saw? Well, FileMaker Pro, Stuart, is really positioned very, very broadly. It's designed for anyone who has information to manage, a small business, mm -hmm. uh, an individual, or even corporations within uh, you know, companies, larger work groups, et cetera, who need to share data, perhaps over a network. OK, but qualifies for the easy-to-use category oh, very much. we're working on. All right, show us how you would use FileMaker Pro. OK, well, what I've got here is a database that I've created. Uh, and it's a database of sporting equipment, camping equipment, hiking equipment, okay, et cetera. So a small business environment here. Right. Very typical small business example. Rather than enter some data directly by hand, what I'm going to do is actually work with some spreadsheet data. Mm -hmm. Now, FileMaker can import and export data in a very wide variety of formats. And I can select what format that I'd like to import or export mm -hmm. from this pop-up menu. Right. Things like DBase, Lotus files, integrating other yeah. FileMaker files together, et cetera. So I have a product data file here that came from a spreadsheet, such as Excel or Claris Resolve. Mm -hmm. And before I actually import the data, what FileMaker displays for me is this dialog box. And this allows me to sample the data that I'm about to import and 
most importantly, I can make sure that the arrangement of the data I've got is going to map well to the database that I've designed. Is the, is the right data getting into the right fields, in other words? Exactly. You know? Because what happens many, many times in an import example right. is you get the last name going into the zip code and the phone right. number going into <laughs> the address. You've got the data. It's not in the right place. Yeah. What I can do in FileMaker is I can move fields around so the data maps correctly. Right. And if I decide I don't want to import some data, it's very easy for me to just deselect that. Mm -hmm. So I get mm -hmm. only the data I want, okay. and I make sure I get it right the very first time. So I click OK. FileMaker goes ahead, import the data for me. And now what I'm going to do is switch to another layout in the FileMaker database so that I can view the information any way that I'd like. Right. And I can then go ahead and sort this database. And what I'm going to try to do here is produce a product catalog that I'll be able to print out and show to you later. I can select any field, select ascending, descending, mm -hmm. or even custom sort orders. FileMaker will sort the database for me, and it lets me know that the database is now in a sorted order. The next step is to switch to the catalog layout, how it will actually look and the layout I mm -hmm. want to print from. And then once I do that, I'd like to preview what the printout will actually look like, see all the formatting that's going to take place, how many I get on the screen or the page at once, mm -hmm. etc. Now what I can do is use the mountains down here to zoom up and take a look at that and I can see that the dollar formatting has been applied, it's date stamped at the top mm -hmm. of the page, etc. Now if I want to do this product catalog on a regular basis, what I'd like to do is remember all those tasks and be able to perform them again quickly. Well, FileMaker Pro calls that a script, and I'll define the script by just typing in a name. Mm -hmm. In this case, I'll call the script product catalog, and I'll click create, and I can control what the script does by simply checking the boxes and making the selection from the pop-up menus. Now, FileMaker's been watching my operations, so it knows that I switched to the mm -hmm. layout called Product Catalog. That's what I printed from. It defaults to do things like restore the page setup, and I can do things like find and sort. Yeah. I can import and export data like I did. Rather than print, I'll check off print and click on preview so that I see it mm -hmm. on screen before it might actually be output. I'll click OK, and you can see my Product Catalog script is now available, and I can reorder it. Right. Now, to make it very accessible to me, the scripts menu is actually something the user can customize. And so uh -huh, my product yeah. catalog script is actually there, and you can notice it's been assigned the keyboard equivalent of Command 3. So I can execute that entire series mm -hmm. of steps very quickly from one operation. OK, could you actually run that script now and prove to me it works? Exactly. <laughs> so I select product catalog. It's sorting the database, switching to the uh -huh. layout, and there I am right back at my preview. Yeah. Now, and you were able to define the script even after, after the fact. You didn't have to decide ahead of time whether or not you were going to do that. Exactly. Yeah. Now, you have an example of the output in which you actually printed out this catalog. Right. Uh, so there's my, my yeah. printed catalog. Mm -hmm. Well, they're both very nice programs. Thank you very much. OK, suppose you work in the Windows environment. What's a good, easy-to-use database? We found one product called AceFile that seems to fit the bill. At Daly's Drywall and Taping Company in Campbell, California, construction is their business. So they have to keep track of customers, materials, supplies, and bid quotes. They used to use RBase, a standard DOS database program that requires a fair amount of training to use. But when AceFile for Windows came along, owner Craig Daly saw a chance to take control of his computer. To set up the other program, we had to call in a uh, consultant. Uh, while they do a good job and are very friendly people, they tend to take up a lot of your time and can be very expensive. And it was very nice for us to be able to change the program as we change. And when we get a new printer or such, we're able to set it up ourselves without calling in an expert. That's because AceFile takes full advantage of the Windows environment, letting you perform most tasks simply by pointing and clicking on menu options or by making selections in dialog boxes. AceFile is a flat file database program, but it does offer many powerful functions similar to those found in high-end, hard-to-use database software. With AceFile, you can access your data through different views, such as form view or crosstab view. And you can actually see up to 10 different databases on the screen at the same time. While the program doesn't support SQL querying, you can perform quick and complex queries using simple search commands or filter expressions. AceFile has made it easier for us to, to get access to a particular piece of information. We can now pick a job that we think we bid in, in a town nearby, but we can't quite remember when we bid it, and we're able to query that information or search that, that database by something maybe we've never searched for before. Uh, we may remember somebody's name, Tony, and, and can't quite remember what 
contractor he worked for and or his last name and we're still able to pull up that job and the information that, from our bid. Daly says he's looking forward to expanding his use of ACE file to include keeping track of his inventory and the cost of his materials. He also plans to use ACE file's graphing feature to plot the use of materials by type of job. At the moment, ACE file is the only flat file database developed specifically for the Windows environment. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. On the DOS platform, two databases stand out for their ease of use and speed. Here to show them off are Tony Lee of Borland and Janet Walker of Fox Software. Janet, in the first segment of the show here in the studio, we were looking at flat file databases. We're now talking about relational mm -hmm. databases, which sort of ups the ante in terms of the Certainly ease of does. use problems. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you do to deal with ease of use in the more complicated database? Well, what we try to do is give the interactive information user, as opposed to the application programmer, tools to make their job easier, tools so that they don't have to think about the word mm -hmm. relational, so that they can work with multiple files without thinking about what they need to do to connect those files okay. together. And we'll see Fox Pro's approach in a minute. Exactly. Let's turn to Paradox now. Now, we talked at the beginning of the program about easy-to-use database being an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. I guess paradox is the idea, right? I mean, it's a paradox. You could actually have a database that's easy to use. Uh, what approach do you take here in Paradox to, to make it easy for the user? Well, Stuart, that's interesting that you brought that up. Paradox comes from um, the case where we need to offer a set of tools, database tools, mm -hmm. to simplify the task of analyzing your data, viewing your data, and presenting exactly. your data yeah. without having to need to program, and Paradox okay. offers that to you. All right, well, I want you to show me how you would do that in Paradox. Okay. Stuart, what we're looking at is a set of three tables, a list of users, and a list of hardware and software owned by these users. Okay. What we're looking at first is so how So this we might be a company's database if it's employees and the software they exactly. have. Exactly. Okay. What we're looking at here is a list of users, and this is what's called table view. And right. this is where we're looking at multiple records at a time. We can use the cursor keys to look at additional records or additional fields. Mm -hmm. If we wanted to see data one record at a time, Paradox can create for us without programming a default form. Mm -hmm. okay, notice here we're looking at data one right. employee at a time. One other way we may wish to look at data is through the use of a custom form. And this form will invoke usage of color, some line drawing, and this is how we relate pieces of information from all three tables. On the top of the screen, I see information from my user table. Mm -hmm. The center of the screen lists all of the hardware items owned by this user, and the bottom of the screen lists all of the software items owned by the user. Notice as I move to each employee, I can see their corresponding pieces right. of hardware and software owned. Mm -hmm. okay. Next, when we, once we have databases, we need to ask questions right. about it. And this is where we want to take a look at our query by example tool. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say the business question is, I want to find out uh, inventory count of all of my software titles. Okay. I would go into the query by example, and what pops on the screen is a list of all the fields of my software table. Mm -hmm. I would use a check mark to select the fields I wish to use, and also type in some keyword summary operators, such as calc, count, all. As I process it, Paradox is going to return to me an answer set that lists for me all of the software items and break it down by version. So these are the different programs I have and how many of each. Correct. Uh -huh. I can even go one step further by creating what's called a cross-tab table, which lists for me the individual software mm -hmm. titles across the side and the versions across right, the top. Right, the DOS Windows version, yeah. Mm -hmm. When we come to presenting our data, right. we basically look at two tools, graphing and reporting. Mm -hmm. Now, on the graphing side, going back to this example, I can press my graph key, which will bring onto the screen a instant stacked graph. bar graph, yeah. instant graph, again, without the need for programming. And it also shows us, in addition to the count of each product, how the count is broken down by version. One last tool as far as presenting data is through custom reports. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show a custom report that shows me a detailed listing of my software inventory. As we preview the report, we are able to sort the information first by department and then by employee. And for each employee, I am listing each individual software title and at the bottom, I can list how many total products mm -hmm. each employee has, as well as how much dollar volume has been spent on the products. And as I page through subsequent pages, you can see additional employees and their related right. software Now, packages. again, was that a default format for this report, or did you have to create all of that? Paradox has a default report, uh -huh. as it does a report uh, default form. 
In this case, this is a custom You had customized that, okay. Mm -hmm. So you can go either way. Yes. All right, Janet, let's turn to FoxPro now. And FoxPro's gotten a lot of press for being a very fast mm -hmm. database. And I think you're going to start out with a uh, database that proves that, right? Right, exactly. I'm going to be demonstrating with a database that has a million plus records in it. It's all the streets west of the Mississippi, give or take okay. a state or two. And it uses the Rushmore technology that's mm -hmm. part of FoxPro to, uh, to uh, speed its queries. And as you can see, we have this uh, mouse-driven interface, so uh, very little typing that I'll have to do during this mm -hmm. demonstration. Just select this item off the menu and create a new query. And I pick this database, the Places database. Okay. And here's our query tool, and it shows our database. We could add more databases to that. Okay, this is the one that has a million street names exactly, in it. Exactly, a million okay. street names in it. And I'm going to select the fields I'd like to include in this query. I mm -hmm. like most of the fields I have selected, but I'll remove that one field. Okay. I could remove more if I, I wanted to. Um, I could send my output to a browse window, which I'm going to do, but I also could send it to a report mm -hmm. or a graph. Um, now, if I did the query now, it would show me all million records, right. but that's not what we really want. I would like to see, for example, all the streets that uh, are, let's say, Oak Streets, uh, Maple Streets, or Elm Streets, mm -hmm. and let's further define the query and pick uh, streets that are only in California. Okay. And now all we have to say is do the query. And, here we and go it runs records. the query, exactly. And then when it's finished, it will display those 2,700 plus records. That's it, it did it. Yeah. In, in a browse window. Wow. So, that's and we could, you know, we could further define that. Maybe we would want to say only those that are in, let's say, San Francisco. Uh -huh. And let's do that query. And then once again, they're all displayed okay. in a browse window. C and can't quite yet say, show me uh, streets named after trees, right? No, okay. <laughs> not quite. That's not coming quite. next. Next year. Okay. <laughs> so now if we want to save that query, we can dock it down here in the corner and run it later, or we can actually close this and name the query. Mm -hmm. And we can give the query, let's just call it streets, and mm -hmm. then we could run it at a later point in time. Uh -huh. In fact, I happen to have a query that uses more databases actually saved on disk and I could run this every day yeah. or every week, and this is working with invoicing data to give me you know, customer information right. on right. the invoices. Show us some of the other features okay. of Okay, I will do that. Um, let's put that away, and we also have a screen tool for creating custom input forms, and um, here's one that's already, once again, pre-created, mm -hmm. and as you can see, it's got different objects in it, and the objects can be picked up and moved mm -hmm. around, and we can add objects to it and design it the way we want, but let's go ahead and run that form and there it is, and there's the form. And so we just can uh, use the uh, tool or the uh, objects that are on right. the screen, change the rating of a movie. This is a uh, database of laser disc movies. Exactly, exactly. So once again, uh, a, a form, the form tool created uh -huh. that. And then in addition to that, we also have a report tool and we can open that. And this is once again, pre-created objects that we can mm -hmm. move around, we can preview it and then make changes to it. For example, mm -hmm. if we wanted to, we could remove that line, remove that box. So you can see how easy it is yeah. to change your reports and uh, get the information out of, out of the database. Okay, well I think in both, both cases it was uh, easy to use, fast and powerful, thank you. Yeah. That's our look at easy to use databases. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news on Random Access. This is a special summer edition with the focus on software. Here are last week's best-selling software titles for the Macintosh according to Mac Connection. Excel 4.0 Upgrade is number one, followed by Norton Utilities, After Dark, FileMaker Pro, and more After Dark Bundle. Rounding out the top ten are Managing Your Money, Excel, Word, Quicken, and Semantic Sam. Next up, Paul Schindler and our summer software review. Time was when these were enough for a kid's picture. Of course, they're still sufficient for the simple stuff, but I've seen the future, and it's called Kid Picks Companion. Watch this amazing demonstration composed and narrated by an actual six-year-old. The Toe Monster by Megan, that's me. One day a monster lived under my bed. He went, Unga Bunga, I want to eat your toes. He was a toe monster. I said, ha ha, I'm not afraid of you. So he went away. 
Now we live under my little brother's bed. That should convince you. Kid Picks Companion, $40 from Broderbund in San Rafael, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by PC Connection and Mac Connection. Mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh. And the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated, plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1 800 366 9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use.